Hello, this is Dr. Ford Brewer with Heart Attack, Stroke, and Cancer Prevention. Today we're going to be talking about uh, more cardiogenetics, genetics which associate risk uh, to, for heart attack and stroke. Um, the two most uh, actionable uh, genetic tests on a daily basis are HAP22, uh, which we can respond to. We need to know if we're diabetic and um, we need to think about a gluten-free diet if we have HAP22, haptoglobin 22. And the other one is the one we're talking about today, APOE, APOE234. Now, uh, that's gene 19Q3.2. And again, long bunch of uh, indecipherable numbers. But remember how we talked about that it's coded. Uh, there's 23 chromosomes in the human, and the first number is the number of the chromosome. So this is on uh, chromosome number 19, position Q.3.2. And again, it's better known as APOE. There are three variations of this, or alleles, or what, would, uh, what are called SNPs, uh, polymorphisms, anyhow. Uh, that we'll talk about. They're numbered, number two, three, and four. Now, what does the word APO mean? APO is short for apolipoprotein. Well, what is an apolipoprotein? You remember we talked about lipoproteins in several other videos. Lipo means fat, protein means protein. We can't just digest fat and have it floating around in our blood, so it would it would cause uh, clots and stoppage of our blood system because of the large bubbles of fat. So we, our body has developed uh, proteins which put these fats in tiny microscopic um, particles. And that's what we're looking at when we're looking at a cholesterol test. HDL is a tiny, um, it's the good cholesterol, it's a tiny uh, lipoprotein particle with a lot more of the uh, protein, therefore high density. The larger proteins that have a lot of fat in them are lower density. Fat floats and it's lower density. So that's LDL, which is the bad cholesterol. So you want more of the empty dump trucks or HDL floating around with those proteins that can suck up cholesterol. All of that's lipoproteins. Now what is apolipoprotein? It's very simple. Apo simply means that it's the combination of the um, protein with the fat together, not one uh, separate from the other. With apolipoprotein 2, 3, and 4, uh, I think it's a, it was, a lot of this was discovered before some of these terminologies were developed, so I think it's just a separate class. Now, <clears throat> Why is it, what's the big deal here? Well, people with APOE44, in other words, they got an APOE4 from their mother and an APOE4 from their father. They're what we call homozygous genetically, APOE44. Uh, they have 10 to 30 times the risk of dementia. So this is a big deal. In fact, there is an APOE4 community. And people in this community uh, with APOE44 also have a significantly increased risk for heart attack as well as dementia. Um, <clears throat> now this uh, number, 10 to 30 times the risk, is what you see with Japanese and Caucasians. There are other uh, populations which uh, have even higher risk. For example, in Nigeria, the risk is even higher. However, the overall risk for dementia is lower in Nigeria simply because the, uh, it appears to be because the overall cholesterol levels are lower and uh, maybe a little bit more of a healthy diet and exercise component. So we talked about the community for APOE44. These are people which have the disease or they have loved ones with this genetic trait and they're trading information to find out uh, what what each other knows about this to improve their lives. Uh, there are other communities that are focused on this issue as well. These are the 
2013 guidelines for the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology. Uh, this mentions APOE um, uh, genetic status several times as well. One of their statements is, look, if you're going to recommend a diet to someone, you really need to know their APOE status. The way they worded it was is a little bit um, bureaucratic, uh, but you know what? That's okay. You need to know the APOE status of... Um, of an individual if you're going to tell them what sort of diet to eat. Actually, you need to know that for other things as well, like alcohol and exercise. Um, <clears throat> this is a complicated slide, but it starts to get into the details of APOE and the reaction to certain things. This is APOE2, and here you see a homozygous 2-2, a heterozygous 2-3. With a low-fat diet, uh, you get an increase in LDLs. Over here, though, with the APOE3-4 uh, and APOE4-4, you get a uh, decrease with a uh, decrease in LDLs with a low-fat diet. So as you can see, these two populations react very differently to the amount of diet or amount of calories provided by fat in the diet. On moderate um, alcohol, uh, improvement of HDLs and, and improvement of LDLs for this group, not so much for this group, the opposite. So that's why they're saying, look, you need to know someone's APOE status before you make that uh, dietary recommendation, including alcohol, uh, fat content, that sort of thing. Again, this is a little bit simpler um, way of looking at it. This was provided by my friends uh, Bradley Bale and Amy Donine, who wrote the book, um, Beat the Heart Attack Gene. They were talking about 9P21, by the way, and we're talking about APOE3. But they also talk about a APOE3, uh, 2, 3, and 4 in their book. Um, this is, yet again, another way of looking at it. If it's an APOE2 uh, two ind uh, two individual, you want to get, they can tolerate and they do well with a moderate to higher fat content diet. If it's an APOE4 individual, you want them on a low diet. Now, what does that mean? 20% or, or less of the calories in fat for low and uh, 25 to 30% of the calories in fat for the moderate alcohol. I mean, moderate um, fat diet. Speaking of alcohol, alcohol, as I mentioned a minute ago, does um, react differently for these as well. After you exercise, uh, those of us with 2233 three, get a, an improvement in our LDLs. Again, folks with APOE44 four, four do not. Uh, let's go back to diet for a minute. The standard recommendation is usually Mediterranean. Well, but then if someone has HAP22, two, two, you say, okay, well, Mediterranean, except cut out anything like breads and pasta that could have... Um, haptoglobin or um, uh, a haptoglobin effect, in other words, anything that's got uh, gluten in it. Okay, so you cut that out. If it's APOE4, then you cut out the alcohol. Uh, if the person happens to be like over 50% of us by the time we get age 60 and we have an ins uh, insulin and glucose problem, then you're looking to cut out any kinds of, cut out as many carbohydrates as sugars and sugars as you can cut out. So, you know, the bottom line is managing a diet is not easy. Um, I do think that the plant-based diet recommendations are very good for those of us uh, that are young and uh, I don't fit that category anymore. Unless you're 80 years old, then you may say I'm young. I'm, I'm pushing 60 um, and I've got insulin resistance. So I have been in a mode of switching my um, my diet from more of a um, low 
uh, low fat diet to more of a low carbohydrate diet. Again, it's always something.